Hi and welcome to One Medicine. Today I will discuss about a purpuric condition called as pigmented purpuric dermatosis. So as the name itself indicates, it's a purpuric disorder wherein there is pigmentation in the skin. So let us understand what exactly is purpura before going into what exactly is pigmented purpuric dermatosis, also called as PPD in the short form. So purpura is a visible hemorrhage in the skin and the mucous membrane that may occur as an isolated phenomenon or as a part of a systemic disease. So there is visible bleeding, a bleeding in the skin that you can see not only in the skin, also in the sub mucous membranes. So in the skin and the mucous membranes, there will be bleeding, okay? And it can occur individually, like separately it can occur or it can be associated with some systemic disease. Clinically, how do you see it you see it as a purplish color if it is a recent bleed or you see it as a brownish red color if it is an older lesion okay and you'll see macules of varying sizes and shapes so there'll be patches like patchy bleeding spots in the skin like that you will see if it is a recent bleed it will be purple in color if it is a old bleed then it will be brownish red in color because the uh, hemoglobin or the hemocytin which is deposited is degraded again that is why and these do not blanch under pressure by the finger or by using a glass light so this test is called as diascope wherein you use a glass test and press on the lesion it is a clinical test done and that is called diascopy on diascopy these purpuric lesions won't blanch because the blood has moved out of the vessel so if this is the blood vessel wall the rbcs have moved out of the rbc's vessel uh, uh, the blood vessel and they're lying outside the vessel then the extravascular space so even if you uh, put the glass slide on this and put pressure here you won't see any blanching capillary mi microscopy or dermoscopy used to determine uh, the intravascular or extravascular bleed so you can use uh, instruments like capillary microscopy or dermoscopy can be used to see if it is an intravascular or an extravascular bleed so we have different types of purpura we have petechiae we have echamosis hematomas palpable purpura retiform purpura based upon the sizes of the purpura also petechiae echamosis can be classified hematomas would be a subcutaneous collection of the blood which has taken place palpable purpura would be above the skin surface you can actually palpate it most commonly seen in henot only in purpura palpable purpura is seen in that condition so you can feel the purpura as well and we have another form called as ratiform purpura different types of purpuras are there so here you can see the palpable purpura kind, kind of raised above the surface where you can feel it as well so you have the ratiform purpura and another purpura here as you can make out by just seeing that you can say that it is non-blanchable right it is like that now coming to pigmented purpuric dermatosis there are certain synonyms for pigmented purpuric dermatosis. For example, we have purpura pigmentosa chronica because it's a chronic disorder again mm -hmm. and it's a progressive disorder. So progressive pigmenting purpura and capillaritis because capillaries are where pathogenesis takes place in this particular condition. So these are the synonyms for pigmented purpuric dermatosis. This is, as I told you, it's called as PPD in the short form. So these are a group of benign and asymptomatic self-limited purpuric disorders of unknown pathogenesis. So most of the diseases as they are unknown, this disease also is of no exclusion. These are also unknown pathogenesis. But these are benign conditions which are asymptomatic. They don't cause any symptoms as such and self-limited disorders. And here you see purpuric pigmented lesions due to hemocytin deposition so as discussed before the rbc comes out so degrades hemocytin is formed and that's why pigmentation is seen in the skin and it results from extravasation of rbcs from the capillaries into the superficial epidermis so the blood vessels come and occupy in the rbcs come and settle down here that's why you see the pigmentation here the site most commonly seen in all of these conditions is the lower extremities. Lower limbs are the most common site affected here because of the gravity. And other organs like other body parts like trunk and upper limbs also can be seen affected. Uh, these are usually benign and generally they are asymptomatic. It has a chronic course with flares and remission. So it keeps coming and going in bouts. Morphological types, there are certain types of conditions in this that we will discuss. So the, the most common one would be Schamberg's disease. About 50% of them would be Schamberg's disease under this pigmented purpuric dermatosis. So that's the most common PPD that is seen. Other than that, we have itching purpura. As I told you, most of them are asymptomatic, but here itching is prominently seen. That's why it is called eczematid like purpura of Daukas and Capitanicus, which is seen for 10 in 10% 10 of the cases. This is seen. It is called as itching purpura because there's eczema like changes which is seen. Eczema again presents with itching. So you can remember it like that. So eczematis like features are seen in Daukas and Capitanicus type of PPD. Next one we have is pigmented purpuric lichenoid dermatosis of Gaugurat and Blum. So here lichenoid features are seen. Okay, That is why it is called PPD of lichenoid type and the name they have given for this is Gaugurat and Blum. That is again seen in 10% of the cases. Then you have another type called as lichen aureus again accounting for 10%. 
then we have purpura annularis telangiectoids or otherwise called as major cheese disease again 5% and the least variety would be uh, this thing you should not confuse it with major cheese granuloma which is a fungal infection trichophyton rubrum infection which presents with two types the nodular type and subcutaneous uh, type that uh, follicular subcutaneous nodular type you have another uh, that is uh, major cheese granuloma whereas this is major cheese disease not a fungal infection that is a major cheese granuloma is a fungal infection okay Next, the epidemiology of this condition. It's a relatively uncommon condition. Any age can be affected, but most commonly middle-aged. There's no ethnic predilection. Asian descent uh, people have granulomatous variant of this. Another variant of PPD is the granulomatous. Type, wherein you find granulomas in the HPE. Okay, so that is more commonly seen in Asian descent. Otherwise, there is no ethnic predisposition. Males are mostly affected, except in major cheese, wherein females are affected in major cheese uh, disease. So the etiopathogenesis which is proposed would be three things. First thing would be that there would be a weak cutaneous blood vessel caused by any etiology and that would increase the crapology fragility. So there's a weak blood vessel wall. Blood vessel wall has become weak and now it is not so strong to contain the blood that, ha that it has. So there'll be erythrocyte extraction. Whatever blood cells are there in it, it will come out of it. Okay, that is one proposed reason. The other reason being uh, the humoral immune system would be activated. We have told that this is a possible reason because in the direct immunofluorescence we have seen c3c1 q igm iga deposits being seen that is why we say maybe there's some humoral immune response involved here the other reason would be cellular immune response because of the inflammatory infiltrate perivascular infiltrates are seen in this so because of that we say maybe cell mediated immunity also is involved in this condition so th these three are the reasons why we see ppd uh, we'll talk about each one of them uh, firstly talking about the schamberg's disease which is the most common type around 50 percent of the patients ha have schamberg's disease as a ppd okay so it presents with irregularly shaped reddish brown patches with pinhead sized reddish puncta resembling grains of cayenne pepper over the legs so on the legs uh, so bilaterally on the legs you see this particular condition you will have this cayenne pepper like spots on the lower legs present okay without any symptom commonly on the lower legs in a middle-aged patient uh, he will uh, present like this cayenne peppers are these uh, chilies that you find the small red chilies that you, uh, that you find which, which is a type of a capsicum of, it belongs to capsicum family only but uh, it is a red chili basically so like that you find uh, cayenne pepper like uh, spots like this on the red spots like this on the lower limb you find okay which are irregular that is the most common type schomburg's disease as i told you fifth decade it will commonly present it has a very insidious onset and asymptomatic lower extremity common site it is persistent and flares and remissions are present so here you can see many like uh, red spots seen on the lower limb basically so this here that you see is the cayenne pepper spots okay red spots that here and there here and there irregularly placed uh, irregularly placed red spots would be present on the lower limbs and next disease is the majuchis purpura majuchis disease also called as purpura annularis telangiectoids that is it will be an annular lesion that you find in this particular condition okay in the first case in 1896 in a 21 year old male who presented with annular patches of follicular and punctate reddish brown macules with telangiectasia and purpura on the lower extremities were seen so on the lower extremities here on the lower extremities again you see annular purplish patches of the skin which you see okay and the uh, individual lesion begins as a punctate telangiectatic macules they extend peripherally with the central hypopigmentation there will be central hypopigmentation and the telangiectasia extends peripherally like this okay so there will be an annular lesion that you find there can be either a single lesion or multiple lesion can be found on the leg most common is again lower extremities but again that's not a rule upper extremities and trunk can also be involved it's asymptomatic flares and remissions like any other disease young adults are commonly affected in this condition so major cheese disease major cheese purpura purpura annularis telangiectoid all of them are the same so here you can make out the annular uh, configuration of this particular lesion here right follicular annular pattern would be present with tel telangiectasia that is majuchis disease next is we have pigmented purpuric lichenoid dermatosis of gaugurat and blum so the catchy point here is the lichenoid infiltrate which is present here okay in 1925 gaugurat and blum reported a pigmented eruption of the lower extremity in a 41 year old man so here you see reddish brown or polygonal lichenoid papules would be present. Lichenoid would be something which is of uh, like lichen planus, violaceous purplish colored lesion would be present. The lesions would be papules and plaques that you see in a background of purpura. So in a background of some purpura is there. On top of that some papule or plaque is present here. Okay. So we call it lichenoid because in the histology we have seen lichenoid uh, uh, the, the band like infiltrate present here. That's why it is called lichenoid. Okay. And it can be sometimes mistaken for Kaposi sarcoma. In 
makeup usi sako ma also we see uh, these uh, purplish color or brownish reddish colored papules and nodules which occur on the extremities in oral mucosa everywhere it will occur right? so it can be if it occurs in the older age you can basically you can sometimes mistake it for kaposi sarcoma also but most commonly kaposi sarcoma will be associated with hiv so that also should help us in differentiating it sides of the lower extremities it has a chronic course again so here is the lichenoid uh, lesions that you find next is eczematic like purpura of daukas and capitonicus also here itching was present okay as we know itching was present here so it was described in 1953 first it is an asymptomatic seasonal eruption in spring and summer so this uh, itching type that is eczematous type is present in spring and summer most commonly mild scaling with pinpoint erythematous macules and patches pruritus is present lichenification if there is repeated scratching is as since there is itching patients will keep scratching it so because of that lichenification or thickening of the skin with increased skin markings can be seen histopathology since it is an eczematous condition in all eczemas we see spongiosis that is swelling of the stratum spinosum layer so you see all of that spongiosis with other ppd changes you will have and the lesions will spread in 15 to 30 days and fades without any treatment over several months or years so if you give it time it's a self limited condition it will fade on its own Next variety is the lichen aureus variety. Uh, it was earlier called as uh, lichen purpuricus. Later, it was called as lichen aureus. It emphasizes the vivid yellow, or it's called as lichen aureus because of the yellow orange color of the lichen that is there. That's why it's called aureus. Lichen because uh, histopathologically we find lichenoid deposits here. Clinical features here is there will be circumscribed macules or papules with a gold rust or orange color. That's why. called aureus so if this colored lesions if we find on extremities then you can call it as lichen aureus in the histology there will be dense band like lichenoid infiltrate of inflammatory cells asymptomatic sometimes in intensely pruritic also site again lower extremity there can be a segmental distribution that is a localized form of this lichen aureus also can be seen young adults in the 2 to 3 decade third second or third decade of life is wherein they'll be affected it has a chronic course with slowly progressive condition next to witching purpura disseminated pruriginous angiodermatitis it presents acutely this particular condition which is disseminated pruriginous angiodermatitis presents acutely with widely disseminated orange to brown color purpuric lesions with pruritus so there'll be pruritus along with that the patients will have this orange brown colored lesions present and uh, dorsal feet lower extremities and trunk can be involved here in this condition these are all minor varieties that we are discussing now okay now another variety is unilateral linear capillaritis or segmental pigmented purpura which is unilateral and it is segmental like only one limb would be affected it has a good prognosis and spontaneous resolution also is seen in this condition we have a granulomatous variety which is granulomatous pigmented purpura wherein middle aged people are affected here mostly of asian descent there will be more purpuric macules on the lower extremities like in other ppds in histology we see granulomatous infiltrate in the papillary dermis that's the only differentiating feature in this granulomatous uh, pigmented purpura and hyperlipidemia sometimes is associated with this condition Now, if pigmented purpuric dermatosis, so mycosis fungoides of pigmented purpuric dermatosis and mycosis fungoides overlap will be present. So, PPD will look like MF. That is mycosis fungoides. Here, lichenoid variants of PPD, that is the lichenoid type that we discussed, would be a precursor of mycosis fungoides, or the mycosis fungoides may mimic pigmented purpura clinically or pigmented purpura can evolve into mycosis fungoides or pigmented purpura that simulates mf can be present histologically so any of these combinations can be present not only uh, idiopathic there are certain drugs also which can cause ppd so drug history also is important in any uh, skin condition but here it's again more important so common drugs which can cause are acetaminophen aminoglutathione ampicillin aspirin bezafibrate carbamazepine as a pain chlorodiazepoxide diltiazem dipyridamol topical flu fluoroacetyl that is 5 fluoroacetyl furosemide glipizide hydrolazine infliximab interferon alpha isotretinoin so some of these like isotretinoin or topical 5 fluoroacetyl or some of these conditions that we commonly use for the patients they can cause ppd that has to be uh, kept in mind not only uh, the blood related causes there are other causes which can mimic ppd or which can look like ppd or which sometimes is related to causing ppd as well so those are contact dermatitis contact dermatitis to certain dyes or paraffinolein diamine black rubber cobalt benzyl peroxide epoxy resin methyl methacrylate eutectic mixture of local anesthetics so all of this can mimic contact uh, they can mimic ppd okay then we have venous stasis or acroangiodermatitis which is a chronic venous insufficiency causes this condition and on the distal extremities again there will be lesions present which will mimic 
Kaposi sarcoma. That is why sometimes it is called a pseudo Kaposi sarcoma as well. Then step aerobics, strenuous exercise, rheumatoid arthritis, SLE, diabetes mellitus, thyroid dysfunction, hyperlipidemia, Hodgkin's, hepatitis B and C, odonto odontogenic infections, polycythemia, hereditary spirocytosis, porphyrias, and purpuric MF. As I told you, purpuric MF also is a variant. So all of this can mimic this. Diagnosis, it's mostly clinically diagnosed. Uh, it can be supported by histopathology if you're doing that. HES test is not frequently done. HES test is wherein you use a spigvomanometer cuff, that is BP cuff. You use inflated between the systolic and the diastolic blood pressure for 10 minutes. And you see an area of 10 cm square in that area and how much uh, bleeding spots you see. Like if it is more than 5 or more than 10, it is said to be positive. Okay, That is HES test, but that is not commonly done. Medical history and contact allergen history. Because of the drugs which can cause, as I told you, and because of the contact dermatitis which can sometimes mimic PPDs. Okay, that's why you have to ask this history. Lab investigations, complete blood count with peripheral smear, coagulation studies have to be done, ANA profile, rheumatoid factor, hepatic serologies can be done to confirm your diagnosis as a supplement. In pathology, all of the PPDs will show similar histology with certain minor variations. Okay, so epidermis in all of them will have spongiosis and parakeratosis would be present in the epidermis. Then in the dermis, you see lymphocytic infiltrate, perivascular and hemocytorin deposits you see. That is in the dermis. And then in the lichen aureus type, you see band-like mononuclear infiltrate in the upper dermis. In granulomatous PPD, granulomas infiltrate in the papillary dermis, you see. So that's the extra thing. Otherwise, spongiosis, parakeratosis, inflammatory infiltrate, hemocytorin is common for all of the PPDs. So this is the picture. You see inflammatory infiltrate, perivascular, spongiosis and parakeratosis present. Here you can see hemocytorin deposition and Prussian blue staining here. Okay, So that's the histopathology that you see. Differential diagnosis would be, as I told you, any cause other than that which can cause similar lesions like contact dermatitis, leukocytoclastic vasculitis, stasis dermatitis, angioma serpiginosum, Kaposi sarcoma, mycosis fungoides, scurvy because of the capillary fragility again, then hypergamma globulinemic purpura. So all of this have to be uh, your differential diagnosis when you are talking about PPDs. Management is very challenging because it's a chronic relapsing course. There will be flares and remissions present. So that's why it is challenging. Patients won't be satisfied. The lesions won't go off completely. Okay. So that's why it's a very challenging thing to manage. Discontinuation of the causative drug helps in a, a long way. Then residual pigmentation may persist for years. You can't uh, tell the patient that your pigmentation will go off completely. It will remain. Okay. So that is uh, to be told and counseled. Uh, treatment options which we have are topical steroids first line then we have anti -stimans. if the patient has itching if the patient is symptomatic you can go for this compression stockings topical pimecrolimus which is a calcineurin inhibitor intralesional steroids can be given if the lesions are palpable and uh, oral bioflavonoids that is rutocyte 50 mg twice a day oral ascorbic acid 500 mg bd calcium dobicilate 500 mg bd grisofulvin 50 to 750 mg colchicin 0.5 mg bd all of these treatments can also be used for venous ulcers or the varicose veins or uh, that in those particular conditions, dermatitis caused by the, those also, you can use this drugs. And then minocycline, pentoxifilin, 400 mgTID, systemic steroid, cyclosporin, methotrexate can be kept as a second choice. Phototherapy, laser therapy, photodynamic therapy recently have been introduced to reduce the pigmentation and to reduce the burden on the patient also. You can go for different modalities of treatment.